We are on the campus of Oregon State University in Corvallis in Memorial Union. Opened in 1928, this building was presented a set of flags during World War II to commemorate those students serving in the military. But now the flags that hang represent the countries of origin for many of the international students here. So glad you're with us on Comcast Newsmakers. I'm Ken Ackerman. Now, when you think of a boys and girls club, what comes to mind? Maybe a place to hang out and play sports? Well, that and much more. Please welcome Helen Higgins, CEO of Boys and Girls Club of Corvallis. Thank you very much for coming here. Would the, is that a, a true statement that the stigma is? It's a place to play sports, right? Absolutely. People think that they're there to play basketball or volleyball or it's just sort of a drop-in playground type space. Uh, but there's actually so much more that go on for kids within our building. Uh, being a youth development organization, it's really about developing our youth. But we have to do it in a way that's stealth because if the kids think that it's more school, more education, right. then they tend not to show up. Now the programs aren't just sports centered. You have finance programs, programs to help them find colleges, things such as that. Absolutely, with our expansion of our high school teen center, mm -hmm. uh, it's been a pilot project that we've been working on for about four and a half years. Our numbers have been increasing. We've been bringing in more programming to help them do exactly those things. Teach them about how to manage money, uh, managing checkbooks, how do you get ready to prepare for high school graduation, what are the career opportunities that you can pursue, um, both while you're in high school so that you're studying the right focus, science, math, uh, liberal arts, uh, and then helping these kids move on to either community college or university. The naysayers would say you can't attract teens to a boys and girls club. Mm -hmm. Are you proving them wrong? Absolutely. In fact, five years ago we had no high school kids in our organization. Uh, today we're at about, uh, about a month ago we were at 30. With the expansion of our teen center due to some grants that we received, we've, we're now at 60 and our goal is to have 150 kids by the end of the two-year project. Um, and last weekend we had an open house and had 78 high school kids in our backyard barbecuing hamburgers mm -hmm. and uh, hanging out at it's the It's a good way to get the word out and try mm -hmm. to change what is known really for a younger person's center. Absolutely. Well, Boys and Girls Club doesn't necessarily make it <laughs> make you sound like, oh, a teen would go here. Right. Uh, but you know, we'll be renaming it. It'll have a different name and it's a designated space only for high school kids uh -huh. so that they don't have to maneuver the younger kids. And our long-term goal is to actually move into our own teen center building. And so this is kind of a baby step expansion into their own uh, wing of the building at our current site and then look to build something that would be uniquely their own because we found that if you build it for them, they, they actually come. do come. Now, you mentioned that uh, the expansion was helped in part by three different uh, grants. Yes. Uh, tell me more about those grants. So the Maytag Foundation provided us a $150,000 dependability award, which is, was awarded to uh, 10 clubs across the nation. We were one of 10 clubs to receive that, and that was in direct support of our teen center. Uh, the Spirit Mountain Foundation gave us $25,000 to help us with some of our staffing and programming, and then Collins Foundation gave us $40,000, again, to help us build out this teen center, because they understand that uh, it's really easy to lose high school teens, especially teens that are sort of on the edge and in order to build the right programming and services to keep them in school, keep them engaged, you've really got to invest there. So they've partnered with us to invest in our vision for this. I think last time we talked you were talking about opening a coffee shop. Yes, our coffee shop actually is what got us started four and a half years ago yeah. to get the kids to come and we're in a fully functional operation. The kids are bringing in oh, probably $150 a month in coffee sales but they've had to learn how to run their operation, purchase their supplies, I believe they are now passing all of their health inspection uh, visits <laughs> from the health inspector, so we're making progress on that front. Um, and of course it attracts the kids to, to get there because they're learning a skill that they can take with them. You must have a well-caffeinated bunch here at We Corvallis. definitely do. Um, let's talk a little bit about the volunteerism, which is a big part of what you mm -hmm. uh, try to teach. Yeah, so volunteerism is one of the sort of the tenets that we teach with our, our youth. Um, last summer, our leadership group, our Keystone group, contributed 1,200 hours of community volunteer service across the community. Uh, they do things like the beach cleanup, sponsor different projects mm -hmm. for homelessness. Uh, their garden from last year, our middle school teens grew a garden, contributed all of the food to one of the local food banks. All right, Helen Higgins, thank you very much for joining us on Comcast Newsmakers. We want to thank you for being here as well. From the crew here, I'm Ken Ackerman. Make it a great day.